Live from the studio of his parents' basement, the Have You Seen It podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Have You Seen It podcast. My name is Mason Knight. Sitting across me is the one and only Cash Krause. But before we begin this review, if you guys can please be sure to smash that like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification as we drop videos here every single day. So with that said, Cash, what are we reviewing today? Today we are reviewing a Indian Hindi language neo western action thriller, Thar. Thar, and I'm actually uh, very excited to talk about this. Obviously, starring Anil Kapoor and his son, two Kapoors, two Kapoors, it's a two for uh, one. Harsh Vardhan Kapoor. Uh, He's getting, got a much more difficult name. Yeah, than it's Anil. it's you know Anil. You probably should have named your son uh, something <laughs> less. Uh, <laughs> should have been Anil Kapoor Junior. Junior, I'm gonna be easy on yeah. us. And uh, we got a little bit more AKAK action, uh, not the film, but uh, I guess um, I guess uh, Anya Kashap actually helped write this film. Yeah, which is pretty cool. He's got his hands in a lot of pots, that guy. He does, but I could definitely see it in this film. You know, with gangs of Wasi porn and whatnot, the grittiness, the the gore, the dialogue, like. It definitely made sense that he had his hands on this, too. Yeah, it's definitely much more of a grounded yes. film that we've seen from India, for and sure. I, I mean, I which I like. And it was on Netflix. It just premiered on Netflix uh, this Friday as well. So yes. Hot, hot off the presses. And I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this is like the first like Western Indian film that you and I have reviewed on this podcast. Yeah, neo western, and that neo-western. it doesn't. We haven't. Yeah, right, it's not an official western. But, yeah, yeah, which that'd be interesting. It would be. Did they have an old west like we had an old west? I know. I just talked about it, but Cholet, Cholet's pretty western. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, neo western for sure. But it is it's definitely more spaghetti western though. Uh, well, Cholet. That's what I prefer, yeah, of yeah. course. You know, I don't want a traditional western. No. <laughs> I, mean, I want. I want guys being blown apart and uh, right. questionable right. heroes doing mm-hmm. questionable things. But this is, it's much more of a revenge flick. Yeah, it is. Than it, it, but a lot of Westerns, spaghetti Westerns for sure. Uh, revenge. Are revenge. Revenge flicks. driven for sure. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, the film takes place in uh, 1985 too. Yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, the wild 80s, man. Wild time, especially in India. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. They did not like those guys uh, going near the Pakistan border. No. Much. Well, they're big, still no, not no. big fans of that. Well, no, still to this day. Yeah, I would say <laughs> yeah. for a few thousand years it's yeah. probably been that uh, way. But yeah, it takes place in the Thar Desert, mm-hmm. near the Pakistan border. It's pretty barren. Yeah. Nothing grows there. Not much. According to one guy, he says Baron like his wife in, in bed. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh. Good nudge, nudge there. <laughs> the guy said, oh, don't you fucking touch me. Oh, yeah, yeah you seriously. creep. Touch yeah. me again. We're going to have problems. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyways, the Thar Desert. Uh, yeah, not a lot going on there. No, not a whole lot. Uh, but what does happen is pretty uh It's murder. There's oh, a lot of yeah. murder happening. That's there for is. sure. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's just like it kind of remind me of like... Uh, I don't know, like a revenge flick that you'd see in like the seventies, like Straw Dogs or something, where guy's wife is raped by a bunch of guys, mm-hmm. and this guy meticulously dismantles them, <laughs> takes these guys and out. dismembers. You could say one to some by extent. one. Oh yeah, for sure. There's some great torture scenes in here. <laughs> there, there really are. Great, and I am I'm somewhat of a torture kind of sewer when it comes to yeah, films. So like I've that. seen. Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot. Another thing I really enjoyed about this too was, you know, and this is often the gripe that we have on this podcast where Indian films tend to uh, go too long, where it's like two hours, 40 minutes, where we're like, dude, you could have cut yeah. this by 30 minutes. They stretch this film, out a lot, yeah. Yeah, but this film was 108 minutes, and I thought it was perfectly paced. Yeah, there uh, wasn't a scene that you never felt kind of went too long. Like, yes. Like we've talked about in India where it's like they're shooting scenes, and it just seems like the guy on the camera is just like... Keep it going. Keep it going for an, an additional stretch, five minutes. Stretch. <laughs> we got to hit that three hour yeah, mark. I know. Yeah. But yeah, this one is definitely it's tight, tightly edited, which is very nice. Uh, which okay, because you're bringing up the editing, this is what's wild to me. So th- this actually received mixed reviews. Okay, so a lot of critics really enjoyed the film, the directing, and the screenplay and stuff. But one of the main gripes that I was reading was that they had a problem with the editing, and I thought the editing for this film was 
great. I yeah, thought it was I did, really well done. I didn't think it was bad at all. Yeah. Uh, I, I would like to know specifically what the, maybe it was like, I don't know, if scenes were getting cut or if it was like the editing where it's like the camera work was not working or something like that. I mean, that could mean a lot with the editing yeah, not could. working. But, uh, but yeah, no, I thought it was all right. I mean, uh, like I said, the runtime was, was really nice. I mean, yes. especially for a revenge film, it does not need to go two hours plus. No. Not at all. But yeah, uh, uh, just I don't know, a classic kind of story. It's there wasn't a lot of twists and turns. I felt like there's a big in reveal, but everyone at that yeah, point I kind had of to have known, had right? To assume. Yeah, yeah right? for sure. And uh, that is one of the gripes, as they said, it was a predictable story. But I, I enjoyed the journey, and it's and it's just your classic revenge tale told. I thought in in somewhat yeah. of a unique way. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's not the greatest film of all time, but it's, I mean, it does its job. And I was really worried it it was going to set up too much and not be able to have that payoff. But, yeah. uh, no, I, I think I got the payoff I wanted. Yeah, yeah. It, it kept itself on track for sure. And it definitely didn't split off in too many subplots or anything no. like that, and which is what we're, I'm usually, usually I'm kind of having a problem remembering all these fucking characters coming mm-hmm. in and out. Like, there's so many characters, but they keep it simple with this one. Yeah. Which I, I really like, do. you know, you got to keep it simple with me. I'm a simple man. And I, uh, I really enjoyed the uh, father son. You know, we joke around about nepotism, but uh, I yeah, thought both. But not the playing wars, father and sons no. in this. No, no, no. It's not. kind of an interesting. You rarely see that, especially in, in Hollywood. You don't see it very much. I mean, rarely ever. But uh, a a dad playing kind of a good character, and then the son, the son kind of playing, playing a bad. Uh, yeah. yeah kind Although of like, it was their blurred lines for sure. Oh, in for this. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. And you definitely sympathize uh, with with uh, Siddharth in this, yeah. played by obviously the the son Kapoor, but you you sympathize with this because like it's this whole Tim, story of you do. and this unraveling of you know these guys who who robbed a house, which we find out later on, like deep in the film, like and the then, last ten minutes. Instead of just you know capturing this woman, uh, they go absolutely berserk. They said they're on amphetamines, right? Or or not? It wasn't. Uh, it was opiate, wasn't Opiates, it? Opiates, yeah. that's what I meant, yeah. But they're they're high on drugs, and then they just take it way too far. They tie her up, and then they yeah, proceed to break beat her and, you know, obviously and assault her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he didn't like that very much. God, I, I got to say, too. Well, they kill her as well. They kill her as well, they, yeah. yeah. We got to make that clear. They make she's that not clear, yeah. Around, she's dead, they, too. And they, I, uh, murder her, yeah. The, uh, the makeup, too, like, it was very... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like jarring and very uh, off-putting. Like to see her. Imagine being Siddharth coming home and seeing your wife in that state and being dead too. Like just black and blue in the face. Yeah, like, it was very off-putting. Yeah, the makeup. They definitely did a good job in the makeup department, yeah. especially with those torture scenes. Uh, I saw one person said Eli Roth would be happy. Uh, the guy who did Hostel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought so. Yeah, I thought they did a really good job, uh, especially those guys after being tortured for. Them. Because eventually, you know, he kidnaps a couple of these guys. Yep. There's like five of them, right? Well, there's there's actually three, but he, I love the way he meticulously ca- uh, kidnaps them all at different times, and I love that scene too. Is there only my, three? Yeah, there was three that he was torturing. Yeah. Well, I know, but he, he doesn't torture all of them. He kills that other guy. Uh, oh, I guess well, is the third guy the guy in the tree? Oh, you're right. That's the first guy. So there is four. Yeah, there's four of them. Yeah, because he doesn't torture everyone. He just kills a couple of the guys, mm-hmm. but. Uh, but yeah, some of the guys get the torture treatment because not all the guys did uh, sexually assault his wife. Right. There's a couple of guys that were, you know, against it. Yeah, just Boy. standing by. They weren't. They weren't super. They weren't just stopping it. it. <laughs> they were more concerned with robbing and being yeah. like, "Yeah, I'll let yeah. you do your own thing." Right. So there is, yeah, because uh, the very first guy we get is that guy in the tree, mm-hmm. uh, and he got his heart taken out. He is did. what they say later on. Yeah. Is that because? But he was tortured. They just don't show that torture. Right. Because they they kind of want to lead you into the story, which I actually like that. I, yeah. I enjoyed that aspect of it too. But that uh, guy gets shot. Uh, just trying to feed some goats, man. Yep, it's all he's doing. So well, there's one that's... tree that produces leaves in this fucking desert, <laughs> and he's up there. I gotta say, Siddharth got a pretty good shot. Oh my god, you're <laughs> you never see him from coming. 500 yards. <laughs> Should have been a sniper does, in the military. Oh my god, and he snipes a lot in this movie too. Yeah, he does. It's constant sniping. Uh, but yeah. But one of one of my favorite scenes uh, was a scene where Siddharth goes to the guy's house and he is like pretending to be this bumbling fool, right? Like can't do anything. And then he goes to the house about the opium trade 
and he's like really serious and really like menacing. And then his wife comes up as well. You see that uh, she had just gotten home or he had just gotten home from work and he's beating his wife as well. Mm -hmm. And like yelling at her, demeaning her. And Sadars at this time, like you can see it in his eyes that like he hates this guy and he's trying to subdue that and hold it back. And I just, I love that scene at the house. And then he finally kidnaps him and does some pretty horrible things, but uh, pretty yeah. awesome at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be honest. I do love, I yeah. do love Revenge Tale. Uh, yeah, he tortures those guys for a long time, it seems like. And uh, some classic torturing, of course, too. Of course, the rat's the, always good. That's, that's oh, a good one. God. That one, that, that's one of the worst ways to be tortured, man. You put a rat in a bucket. And you put it on someone's skin, and then you light a torch yeah. and hold it there, so they're just clawing their way out of the guy, and it's, <laughs> yeah. that's brutal. A rat will do that too, man. Yeah, but there's a lot more. There was beatings to be involved. There was uh, a nails. There was crucifix, and he like wrote a journal of all the things he was gonna do. Yeah. And at one point, Anil Kapoor finds the journal, and it's like, uh, it's like the guy from Seven. It's like very <laughs> meticulous. Yeah, very, like, yeah. dude, he planned this out for a long time. This Sardarth guy. Yeah. I mean, he even went he to even the had, he even of, knew like how he would torture the guys because mm -hmm. he had like the the nail drawing. And what I like the comparisons to in, in the actual screenplay of you were wondering why he was doing these certain forms of torture throughout the film, and then you realize at the very end. So like him breaking the finger off and taking the ring. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, is he robbing these people? I'm confused. But then you find out that this was all the jewelry yeah. that his wife were, had over time. Yeah, did they ever discuss how much time was passed since the rapes and the murders? I, uh, I don't remember specifically. Yeah. It just seemed these like guys, an amount like, of time. Did not sell any of this jewelry. No. But they're wearing all of it. I mean, it's a very... Because one guy's wearing the necklace, too. Yep. But, well, the necklace, I love that scene yeah. because he actually has sex with uh, the guy's wife, right? Classic. Classic. But, now you're psychologically torturing that guy. Right. <laughs> but what I loved is I was, you know, I didn't really think much of it when she's laying there and he takes the necklace off, sets it on the bed, and then they have, you know, sexual mm -hmm. intercourse. And I was thinking, what... Why did he take the necklace off? That was so random. And then you find out later on that, oh, wow. Yeah. That was his wife's. And the guy who sexually assaulted and murdered his wife gave it to his wife. Mm -hmm. What an evil fuck. Man. Of course. We can't wear la ladies' jewelry. Right. It'd be a little <laughs> weird. Hey, man, why are you wearing that? That's the weird jewelry? part, not the rape and the murder. <laughs> I'd say that's well, pretty lady, weird, too. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's a cross dress. He's a freak. Yeah, well, weirdo. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I liked, I liked that a lot, too. That was kind of the subtle, like... Uh, Reveal, I guess. Because mm -hmm. the gal, I can't remember her name. Uh, they kind of have a little love connection or whatever. They do. Because her husband's a dick. Obviously. Well, he's an asshole. I, I believe uh, the actress's name is Mukti Moan playing Gori. Or Gari. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah, Mukti. It wasn't Panna, was it? No, Panna was one of the guys. He was one of the guys that he murdered. Oh, right. Yeah, right, Panna right, right. was the guy that he went to his house. You know That's felt, the husband. Yeah, right. You know who I felt mm -hmm. bad about? Was the fat cop and I got just blasted bro, at the Bjor? <laughs> bro, I just love Bjor. He's always sitting for one. He's always sitting. <laughs> there was a scene where that guy was not sitting. He might have been the most likable character in film. I'm telling you, and I knew it. I knew it when I started this film. I'm like, this guy's so likable. He's such a funny <laughs> cop. Just always sitting around, always like smoking cigarettes. I go, Never I know he's gonna get job. blasted Never. away. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was gonna die. And sure enough, he gets sniper he gets blasted. blasted. He just yeah. collapses by the yet. um. Uh, what what are, what are they called? The di uh, decoits? Yes. yes. Yeah. Who were... Uh, drug smugglers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with yeah. the opium. Yeah, they were juggling it through like antiques and stuff, yeah. right? Which was what the guy was pretending to be was an antique dealer. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I again, that was a subplot that didn't get too far off. You know, like... They no, that, that, one that, made, that one made sense for the story too. Yes. To like keep it going. That was like... Uh, yeah. Because you had the other guy who like wanted to like solve these murders or whatever mm -hmm. and he's the one that kind of called Anil Kapoor in who of course Anil Kapoor is a cop who's just about to retire of course you can't he can't have and a cop Dior was just about to retire who isn't retired are there any cops left <laughs> no Christ. no one's uh, no one's coming in to replace them <laughs> but yeah that they're pretty much the ones who called in uh, the inspector and then he was gonna like have one last chance to kind of prove himself 
man, does Neil Kapoor get in over his head in this one. Okay. It's like, and, <laughs> and one thing with the deal, uh, his character is, man, you got a better plan if you're going to go <laughs> shoot a bunch of guys. Because they drive up. They drive up, and their truck gets blasted with gunfire. Literally three out of the five cops that he brought along are yeah. already dead instantly. And he's like, oh, I'm well, surrounded. Fact, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, wasn't great planning. Got no. Be a lot of times, remember where they were getting chased at one point, and the fat cop Bjor was doing yeah. nothing. <laughs> and they even says it's like you know the gun's not there just to scratch your ear yeah, or something yeah. like that. And he's like, oh yeah, I, mean, like, yeah, I guess I should start shooting. And he starts these not guys. even looking. Anybody every hit is landing perfectly on that. Uh, hey, great shot, <laughs> great shot. Well, the reason they train. kept Bjor around because clearly he's not doing the physical fitness part of it. <laughs> No, and remember, I love this scene where they walk up the hill like 50 feet, and he's like, I need to take a break. <laughs> Is he's that like, where you get shot? Yeah, because <laughs> he couldn't walk up the hill. Oh, the man, no. uh, he lived by sitting, and he and died, died, but he d- yeah. died doing what he loved, though. R.I.P. That was sitting, just sitting down. <laughs> yeah. So sad. Yeah, brutal. brutal I did like that country. character a lot, though. I did too. I liked. Yeah. I also liked the car chase scenes too. At one yeah, point, yeah, they were. Yeah, they were good. At one point, they do. It's like uh, they really do kind of neo western thing because it's horses and jeeps. Because it's kind of nice because it. it's nineteen eighty five India, so they definitely still have a lot of that stuff still. Mm-hmm. So I like that kind of combination of modern and old west. And I love the gradual progression of the decaying of that water buffalo. I think that's what it is, yep. or some yep. sort of yep. buffalo. Yep. Yep. But uh, I really did water with that. that water buffalo. Yeah, not a <laughs> lot. <laughs> a lot of water around those uh, yeah. deserts. But yeah, I, I like that too. Too that kind of was like a, I don't know, like an analogy of the story that was going on. Yeah. Everything is rotting away, it's kind decaying. of. A, yeah, mm-hmm. and dying and uh, yeah. But but he does. He makes love with that guy's wife. Good for him. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, she's the one to end him. Well, and I and that scene too, like uh, Anil's coming in. He's like, "I know everything that you did." You know, he's pointing the gun. You think, "Okay, Sadars is not going to surrender, right?" So we're going to get in a uh, classic Western shootout, and the wife just goes, "You bastard!" (laughs) I'm thinking, "Is he?" This is after he he lit her husband on fire, (laughs) bro. We got to talk about that, man. That body looked real. It like, when they good. lit him on fire, you could see his foot on the bottom. I'm like, oh, my God. And then the charred corpse as they do the, uh, yeah. the crane shot, like, uh, going back, and it's still all smoky and charred. I like that, man. This film was, like, super gritty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, th- that's one good thing is they did not shy away from that kind of stuff, which they definitely could. But, yeah. they, uh, yeah, they stuck with it. I liked. I like at one point where the guy tries to escape, where he gets out with mm-hmm. like a wrath, and he just goes out and drags him back. Yeah. In. Like, and then the boy, the guy's just begging, just kill, I didn't kill me. me. Yeah. And the then, boy, that's another thing. I'm like, he's gonna murder yeah. this kid, hundred percent. Unfortunately, the boy falls off some rocks, and you think he's dead, and then you see it at the end that the father picked him up. So yeah, he survived. Of course. I wish they could have just been like he died, because that would have really been like you know. The cost of revenge. Exactly. And that would have been the super anti-hero kind of thing. Yes. It's like we definitely, we understand where this guy's coming from, and we'd be perfectly okay with him killing all these other guys. Yeah. But now he's but because really actions, starting to blur those where he's he's killing innocent people yeah. just for his blood. Even thirst. if it wasn't intentional, it's still a cause of what you were doing. Yeah. yeah. So if, if they really would have leaned into that more, I feel like you could have had that kind of shootout at the end where it's like mm-hmm. now Anil Kapoor really has a reason to kill this guy. Yeah. Because everything else is like, you know, he's cleaning up. He's, well, even he's essentially Anil, Batman. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even Anil was like, you know what? I kind of understand why you did this. <laughs> yeah. I've seen all your crazy diary yeah. of everything you're going to do. <laughs> your very detailed pictures. Yes, you were. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, But I thought for sure that kid was just going to fucking get it. Like, he oh, sees yeah. that kid. And he's like, and that kid was dead. terrified. He's like, Rah! well, that was the kid kept looking back. that also found the guy, the guy hanging. hanging. So it's a rough couple of days for this kid. The kid's got a lot of trauma to go through and some, you know, maybe CTE after that <laughs> fall. <laughs> oh, there's something wrong with that kid. That was a tough fall for it sure. It was. It was a big fall. <laughs> he's lucky to be alive. Yeah. But now that kid will mind his own goddamn business. Exactly. When he's That's out what there. he should do. <laughs> mind his own business. But yeah, uh, yeah, I like that. You know, he was, uh, I like the whole anti-hero story for sure. I like that a lot. But uh, yeah, it was, I was pleasantly, I don't know why I was surprised, but uh, Anil Kabori's pretty much good in everything. Yeah, he is. But yeah, um, an hour 48, 
Love very it. nice, very palpable, very easy to digest. Yes. Uh, especially, you know, you can't go too long, especially when a movie has this much torture in it. You know, you got to you got to understand what people can and can't take. Yeah. You know, it becomes at some point the torture becomes the entire story and it's overcompensating everything else. So they had I thought just enough of that. For sure. You know, you don't want a hostile movie where it's like you're only there to <laughs> see people get tortured. <laughs> tortured yeah. Right. And there's zero plot at all. Yeah. This movie had just enough plot, but not to say that there was like twists and turns. It was perfect for me. I yeah. I, this is, uh, thus far in 2022, this is my favorite Indian film that we have, uh, watched. I, I love this from beginning to end. Uh, and I just love those, you know, kind of the neo-Western story, uh, classic revenge tale. And I thought they executed this really, really good, like really well. I, I loved it. And I would highly recommend people go to Netflix. This is free. I mean, you got a subscription, go watch this on Netflix. It's worth it. And under two hours. Yeah. Yeah. And (laughs) How many how many Indian films have we done that are under two hours? Uh, I could count them oh, on one hand. I guarantee you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but this this is definitely this is right up there with definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. I mean, uh, I would say the I mean, Gangs of Waspore was what five hours long. Well, between the two films, yeah, yeah. which was I was totally but fine with that. But. Those ones have <laughs> yeah. all the justification. That's, that's in what the I was gonna world. say. That's the one really long one where I'm like that. But I think every one of my favorite Indian films is under that two hour mark. Mm. Uh, Ship of Theseus wasn't very long yep. at all. Uh, Jalaka two was Jolica an hour and a half. Was, yeah, exactly. Yep. So I think they've all been under that. You just don't want to overstay your welcome. We no, talk about don't. that a lot. And uh, like you'd rather make a crisp, clean, you know, under two hour film than go too far. Well, and you'd rather lose people be like, I want more of that mm-hmm. than people being like, I could have used a lot less That's of a- that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, just makes sense, right? You want them, you know, uh Leave and, them wanting more. And, you know, if you're still watching this review, Cash, we have a very special announcement for uh, what we're going to be reviewing yeah, next weekend. I know. Guys, uh, thanks to a commenter, and this is why it's really important that you guys comment below because we can find out new information. We had a problem for months signing up for Sony Live. We are happy to announce that someone commented below and said that we could actually subscribe to it through sling so today the have you seen a podcast is subscribed to yeah. sony live and voot all the indian cinema stuff and we are going to review next weekend drum roll please Brrr, truly yeah I can't. ljp let's go we've been talking about truly what two years now it's oh a lifetime maybe it feels like <laughs> By yeah. now, it's been out. I swear it's been out for two it's years. It's been out since November. <laughs> yeah, very I, long time. Yeah. So we're behind the game, but you guys know that review is going to be great. We're very... I, I'm just... I'm so thrilled to watch I have it. No, I, I don't even know what to expect at this point from Truly. I hope it's fucking... I mean, we waited so long for it. We have. Uh, I know. We might be hyping it up I too know, much. I know too much. But what's but LGP whatever. doing these days? Uh, slaying. <laughs> well, I mean, does he, have, does he have another film coming out? Uh, let me check. Actually, I we can't. might as well check real quick. Yeah, I think we got some time. I can't remember if he's got anything else coming out, but let's see. Okay, so Cheruli, let's go to his wiki page, see if he's got another film coming out. Uh, he does. Look at that. So Cheruli well, was twenty twenty, and this film is called Nanpakal Narathu Mayakam. Is an upcoming Indian Malayalam language film directed by L. J. P. Nothing himself. on that. I love the poster though. Yeah, the poster's the sick. Poster's great. Yeah, a little abstract. Uh, oh, Mamuthi. Do we know who that is? Uh, Mamuthi. Yeah. Oh, we know Mamuthi. <laughs> that sounds very <laughs> familiar. That's a great name. Yes, Jim. it is. One name. You'll That's all you it. need. You love to see it. That's when you know you're top of the pack, man. Yeah, I wonder if there's a trailer out for this or anything. It doesn't look like there's Oh, much. as soon as there's a trailer for this, you know we're going to be reacting to it, folks. Yeah, and it doesn't say if it's like a, a horror. Or... I don't know if it's dropping in 2022. <laughs> uh, but that's how OGP does it, I man. know. You don't know anything about anything yep. until and then the film's out. And he'll drop a trailer and then be like, oh, by the way, release next week. <laughs> drop the trailer, and by the way, I released the film a week, a week ago. ago. <laughs> yeah, so oh, no go check trailer. it out. Yeah, no. He's like, I also shot this in 11 hours. And you'll never be able to see it anywhere outside of India. No. <laughs> so don't even yeah. attempt. I was looking to buy the DVD of Truly, but I don't I think know. they even print DVDs. Nope. Like, I don't. <laughs> he said, look, you got to subscribe <laughs> to Sony Live. I'm about that money there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, pr- produced by Muthi as well. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm super stoked about Cheruli. I hope it's as good as we think it will be. 
I but the know. poster's cool. The poster's I like the awesome. poster, yeah. man. It's it's trippy. It is pretty cool. All right. Well, uh, that is our review for Thor. We got off on a little bit of a tangent on another film, uh, but we do love our LJP. Yeah, we got to give him some respect. Uh, if you guys like what you've seen here, please be sure to smash that like button, comment below, and subscribe to the channel. We are making our push to 20,000 subscribers. We're close. Uh, Hopefully by summertime, we can get real close to 20,000 subscribers. Uh, could not do it without each and every one of you. So thank you for watching and listening. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause. And until next time. Uh, bye.